So just in your, your final day at St Helens, just sort your emotions, how do you feel? Yeah, it's uh, got a, a range of emotions, that's for sure, but I just feel, like I said after the grand final, you know, just so content knowing that you know, it is hard to go home, but at least I'm going home knowing that we've, we've won the Super League trophy. It would have been a, a horrible... Uh, Thing to do, you know, going without it. So it's to knowing that, you know, we brought it back to our team and our club and our town. It's, it's uh, rewarding. If I just can go right back to the start, really, you know, you got the call from Mike Rush, uh, St Helens head coach. Can you remember kind of your emotion at the time? Were you nervous? What, what were you feeling ahead of coming coming over? Yeah, it's quite funny. It obviously all, all happened really quickly, didn't it? Um, you know, I. I'd miss not being the head coach and I'd always been a head coach of, of lower grade teams in Australia and then I was two and a half years NRL assistant at the Roosters and I missed you know, not being the head coach and then um, all of a sudden this opportunity had, had come up out of nowhere really and, and within two weeks of the whole process I, I'd landed here so it all happened so quickly. Um, you know, I obviously still have to thank Trent Robinson, the head coach of the Roosters, for allowing me to leave mid-season. It's never great. Um, but I was just so excited about it. I just couldn't couldn't wait to get here. And then the minute I got here, as I've said a number of times, I've just loved every minute of it. So you arrived, I think, on the Wednesday the Thursday. You had one training session. You had a captain's run, I think. And then you were you were over to Newcastle. And we thumped all 45 mil, if I remember. It couldn't have started any better, really, for you, could it? <laughs> no, the... the the uh, whirlwind continued the minute I landed here. Yeah, I went and met the staff for training session with the players and then after a long flight from Australia I was on a three hour bus trip up to Newcastle. Um, and even the day of the game, I just remember waking up and uh, Rusty saying to me, come on, we're going to, got to go and meet Ben Barber today because he's over here and, and four or five other clubs are meeting him. And I was like, geez, you know, I've got to get my head around playing a game yet. And, and even on Ben, I think that that sign was a really important one for the club. Um, we weren't playing a great brand of rugby league at the time, and and obviously with myself signing, I, I didn't have a, a name, you know, I didn't have a playing background, so I knew there wouldn't be a lot of excitement around the club. The the fact that I was going to be the new head coach, so to get a player of, of Ben's ability to, to sign with the club, I thought was a real good good lift for everyone, and in particular the fans, knowing that we're going to have a really good player joining us soon. So um, that whole weekend, yeah, was was a great weekend, as you said, and then to get a great win like we did against Hull and um, just sort of spark the, the back half of that, that season. As you all know, Ben had a great, great season, a great time here, and that season unfortunately ended with, you know, the... The last minute dramatic Luke Gale drop goal, that must have been obviously disappointing for you and everybody involved. Yeah, it sure was. It was a, a funny thing now that I look back on it now because it all seemed too easy at the time. You know, we were all working hard and the players all bought into what we wanted to do. And then I felt that like we finished the, the season the best, the best side. And then unfortunately, as you said, to fall short that night in the semi final, where I thought we were, you know, by far the better side, um, was, was really disappointing. Uh, but then I was really excited about 2018. I thought, right, now we're going to get a full season at this. And um, and unfortunately, you know, we fell short in 2018 as well. You talk about that that next season. You know, your first full season in charge, and and to go from kind of seventh, sixth to to finish ten points clear at the top, incredible, really. Was there a moment in that season where you thought, I've got the culture right, I've, I've got the team where I want it to be? Was was there a key moment you remember that you thought, yeah? You know, we are where I want them to be at this moment in time, given the, you know, the, to finish ten points clear is an incredible jump in the previous season. Yeah, it was, I think off the back of the, the disappointing 2017, I think we were all ready to go at the start of 2018. And, and now that I look back at it, we just we played our best rugby league at the start of the year. We come out and I think we blew Cass off the park by 50 here and then round three or four we beat Sulphur by 60 and we had a man in the sim bin or sent off, I think. So, um... You know, we used the disappointment of 27 and, and, and come out of the box flying and and a lot of, you know, things, you know, we finished the year not great in 2018 and, and a lot of people speaking about freshening up and not rotating players and all that. We didn't rotate anybody in 2017 and no one asked for that. Uh, and you look at Salford this year, you know, they didn't rest anybody once and they got to the grand final. So, I, look, I think uh, it helped resting them players this year, but I think the... The downfall of 2018 was we, we we played at a level like that that we couldn't get any better. Ben Barber couldn't play any better than how he started the year. Danny Richardson couldn't play any better. No, everybody couldn't play any better. And then as the year went on, other teams naturally get better as the season goes on. And we had nowhere to go. So everyone was slowly chipping away and catching us. Uh, and then we just, yeah, we, we got a bit stale and probably should have changed things up a bit more. Um, 
And even the semi-final, you know, Catalan's Challenge Cup semi, you know, blown off the part that day. And I'll accept that. That's probably the one game that I thought we got wrong in a number of ways. But all the other semis were all different and all close. I mean, Warrington here, I, you know, I think we lost four games at home that year. And I was thinking, we've got a home semi, but I didn't feel it was a big advantage. I thought, I reckon we play better, better at Warrington. So that wasn't a great feeling. And then we only fell just short. You know, we let a good side, uh, the Warrington R, with five minutes to go and... I still think on that season we finished first by a long way and the advantage was playing fourth. And I thought, well, Warrington aren't the fourth best side. I thought they were better than, than Cass. Cass finished third. We got to play them straight in the grand final. So, you know, you need everything to go right. That's what I've also learned. 2017, I thought, geez, we can win this. And then and then 2018, you fall short on every way. And then 2019, you go, you need everything to work well to, to win the trophy. And it sure did this year. I mean, at the start of the year, you know, Lachlan Coote came in, Kevin Nagama, Joseph Paolo, Longy moved on, Richie Marshall came in midway through. But just looking at Cootie in particular, you know, he had massive boots to fill with, obviously Ben Barber having moved on. You know, how important is he and, and the rest obviously of the lads as well, how important has he been this year? Yeah. So important, you know, and I knew he would be. I think, um, and, and different style of player, as we know, Ben Barber individually is as good a player as we'll ever see. You know, so some of the tries that he scored for us here, are, you know, we're so lucky that he played at this club and, and we've got those memories with him. Uh, Lachlan Coon, different type of play, you know, much more um, solid all round game rather than being brilliant in one area. And, and I still remember the start of the year, you know, there was a lot of pressure on, on Cootie and, and I gave him a lot of responsibility. I said, mate, you're going to be doing a lot of general play kicking, goal kicking, you know, organise another side. And um, in the first round or two, we still won, but people are critical of his game. And I thought, geez, we're a, we're a tough crowd here because I knew that he just spent six or seven years playing with Jonathan Thurston at the Cowboys where Thurston did all that stuff. Cootie just played his small part in the side, whereas this year he came over and I said, mate, you're going to have heaps of responsibility which he, he looked forward to and I think he handled that as good as I've ever seen anyone you know with, with the boots to fill in Benny and then having all that more responsibility um, and you know we all saw how good he played um, all year in particular grand final day and you know this season you know, we broke all records undefeated at home finished the record 16 points clear you know, the first time in I think over 124 years that a team's done that and obviously the grand final as well so plus coach of the year let's not forget other than that Wembley defeat I suppose it was the perfect season in a way, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, really disappointed at Wembley. No, no getting around that. But I also, you know, when I talk about everything's got to go right to win a trophy, you know, and, and that day at Wembley we had our key guys hadn't played for five weeks. You know, Lachlan Kurt hadn't played for five weeks. Alex Wormsley, James Roby, Morgan Knowles. So, you know, we couldn't do anything about that. That was just through injury. Um, and then obviously the game didn't go great and then, yeah, we were chasing the game and we made a lot of errors and everyone goes, there's Saints bottling it again. I thought, well, if we'd have got in front and Warrington had to play, then it would have been the other way around. So the disappointment of the Challenge Cup, you know, that was hard to get over again. Um, but to the players' credit, you know, to, to back up, I think one of our best wins was the next week, you know, when we got the League Leaders Award to do us and we, we held on and beat Cass 4-0 here. Um, you know, our fans love the free-flowing rugby, but I think they knew how tough we were doing it and they got behind us as good as I've ever heard them that night where we hung on for a gritty 4-0 win and I think that really skyrockets the back end of the year. You know, we had two more games to win, we won them both. And then um, the week off into the semi was another interesting one, you know, I... I knew we needed to, to freshen up. We are making a lot of errors in games, but it was off the back of playing 33 weeks straight. So we went and did some different things. We went and walked up Mount Snowden and went to Snowdonia Venture Park. And, and even then I knew that was going to cause a lot of people to go, hey, what, what's this side doing here? We need to win the comp. And, and I know I would have made Rushy very nervous as to why are you doing this. And, and I knew we needed to freshen up. And the rest of the staff knew it wasn't my decision on my own. We, you know, we've got some key people, Matty Daniels, Nathan Mill. You know, Paul Wellens, Rich Marshall came in, as you said. And uh, just on Rich, you know, what a great job he's done at coming in mid-year. Um, and and Longy, fantastic help. And because our two seasons don't overlap, I had no issue with him going. I did the same. I left mid-season to come here, so I couldn't begrudge Longy the same opportunity to do the same. So, you know, we, we got away, we freshened up, and then, you know, everyone was telling us, even our own fans, how good Wigan always come at this time of year, and Wigan come good, and they're, they're the form team. And... I'm thinking, you know, as you said, we've finished 16 points clear. Why are we all of a sudden forgotten about or not talked about? Well, it's justified we're going to go out and perform. And then for us to, to blow them off the park 40 to 10, I thought, you know, I was so happy for the players to, to do that. And then we go into the grand final where all of a sudden Sulphur beat Wigan and now 
everybody's going for Salford off the back of the season we've had. I thought, geez, it's a tough crowd here. Um, but I understood why, you know, underdogs and what a great season Salford have had. But for us to break all the records, you know, the history of the game over here, 124 years, that's how good a side our side was. But we had to go and deliver it on the biggest stage. And, you know, I'm just so proud that they did. And, you know, you had plenty of team talks in this dressing room. Um, was there anything in particular you said before that grand final or, or even in here? Any team talk that sticks in your mind that you'll remember? No, no, not really. I just, um, you know, I always keep things pretty simple and clear. I, uh, I don't think you make a, a movie out of my motivational speeches. I think, um, you know, all, all the work's done by the time I'm chatting to the players. And, and I always taught them, you know, short and brief because, you know, they don't want to be bogged down listening to things. They, they've, we've done all the work during the week. It's just a couple of clear, simple reminders of what's important and, and what they've got to do during the game. And, you know, the emotion of it's got to get to the side uh, and, and concentrate on what we've got to do. So it was ne never any inspiring things that I can go, geez, that was great what I said. No, not at all. I remember speaking to Johnny Lomax a couple of weeks ago and he said when you came in, um, you really challenged him you know, as a, as a person, as a player. And I think Cooley, Big Al, Morgan Knowles, a number of the players have said what an impact you've had on their career, not just as a player, but as a person. And, and the one thing that they've always pointed out is your honesty and how honest you've been with, with, uh, with everybody in the club, not just the players, you know, the whole staff. Do you think honesty is something that really defines you as a coach? Yeah, I think it's yeah, definitely part of it, but I just find that you know, it's just so obvious to work that way. The minute you start telling people different things and, and all you're doing is confusing yourself. So, you, you know, as I said, we've got to be clear on what we've got to do. And I think we were, the way we played this year, you know, we built this season as it went on. I spoke about 2018, we come on and went bang. And a lot of the players this year, like, hey, we were good to do, oh, no, no, we'll be right. I knew we were good enough to, to start the year well enough to win games and get better as the season went on. And I think that's, you know, we, we went the right way about it this year. And, and in terms of challenging players, the hardest thing when you've got such a talented group that we had is, is challenging them to not do everything. You know, we've got so many players that can offer so much that, that if they're in other teams, you're going to be going, mate, hey, do this, do that, do this. And we're actually saying, hey, we've got enough strike all over the park. And that was a, a credit to them when we'd won some games and, you know, the... Sky reporters would go, geez, you scored eight tries tonight from seven different try scorers. And that must have happened half a dozen times during the year. And I thought, that's, and I kept reminding them, that's how good a team we are. And, you know, we don't need an individual to do too many things in this team. We just need everyone to do their own job. And and Johnny's a great example of that. I thought he had his best year for us by mile, you know, and, and due to he's got so much he can do on the pitch that sometimes works against you if overplaying and other people can't, you know, go with you. So if he simplified his game and, um, and played within himself, I think, and as a number of players did, and, and you know that all helped to to get in that great team that we had this year. There's obviously been a number of standout moments this year. Well, I suppose the one for you must be the the grand final. Is that the, the key moment, the, the standout for you? Yeah, definitely. You know, without doubt. You know, it has been as good as we are all year and, and all last year. You know, without the, the Super League trophy, it would have been so disappointing. And I would have felt horrible leaving the club knowing that you know, how good we were and we didn't get the job done. So, um, and just the, the, the huge consistency on which this team's delivered. You know, to win every single home game here. Uh, we lost three league games. We, you know, when someone told me, you know, we never lost in the north of England. You know, we lost once in Catlands and, and twice down in London. So, you know, that, that is such a, a hard thing to do. You know, we know the away trips are so hard. Our fans travel, which is brilliant, and we really need them. But there's some tough grounds you're going to go and play at. And uh, for us to never be beaten there this year is such a, you know, a proud feeling for everyone involved in our club. You touched on the crowd there. I think instantly you came over and they warmed to you instantly. Just a word on them and how great they've been, not just for you, but your family. And, and it's just been a great relationship you know, between you and them, hasn't it, over the years? Yeah, it has. And I think and the reason being is because they understand the game. And, and the, one of the first things you spoke about when you said when you got here, I said to the players, don't be uh, turning on your own fans because they're giving you a hard time. They're giving you a hard time because you're not playing well. And it's that simple. And the minute you start showing how much you want to play for this club and how much you want to turn up and, and get the job done and play an exciting style, and, and those same people start rewarding you because they want to win just like we do. And, and they understand the game. All our supporters, they've, they've grown up in this town following as a kid. So don't for a second think they don't understand rugby league. So I said, get, get over yourselves and stop thinking that you're getting hard done by here. And the minute you start winning, they, those same people start rewarding you and, and that's exactly what happened you know I had so many people in the street tell me that I needed to get rid of the players and bring in fresh players and they're no good and all that and then you know within weeks they were saying to me how good they were playing and I said these are the same 
van. So it just, as I said, it's justified. And for them to, you know, they knew how much we wanted to win and, and um, you know, to, to finally win on the weekend and to see so many fans stay back at the end for those celebrations. And I know the whole town would have been packed in the pubs as well. So, um, yeah, it's just so, so rewarding for such a... A great town that we've got here, rugby league, such a big part of it. You know, we know how big football is, but that, that's scattered between the four Northwest teams here. So you've got one one team to follow, and, and we've brought the trophy back to the town. It's a great feeling. Over your two and a half years, would you, have you achieved everything you wanted to achieve? Is there any regrets? That you'll... Oh, mixed thoughts. You know, I'd love to love to play the Roos in the World Club Challenge next year. Love to win the Challenge Cup next year. Love to go back to back. All, all those things you'd love to do. Um, but, you know, also you try and do those and you fall short and, and then you miss an opportunity to go back home. And I've said enough times to you this year, you know, the only reason I'm going, I do want to coach in the NRL. I know I've got a massive task, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, I will miss all those opportunities on being here, but I'm excited about about the future, and I'm excited about where this club's at. You know, I can't wait to to watch the boys next year. We've got every single player staying next year that, that played in the grand final. So, for myself, knowing that you know I've left the club in a great spot is as good as I could leave, and I know that if I'd have left last year, how bad I felt, it would have been a horrible feeling. So at least I'm, I'm you know feel content leaving the the club knowing it's in in a good spot. Justin, listen, it's been great working with you. I thank you for everything you've done on behalf of the, the whole club and the fans and thank you and good luck in Australia. Thank you very much. Cheers.